Do you ever get excited at the prospect of saving hours of your life by mapping keyboard shortcuts or programmable buttons on your camera, but then get overwhelmed when you actually have to sit down and do that task? For the last four or five years, I've been honing the C70's assignable buttons. So I'm gonna share what's been working for me for the last five years with the C70 and now C80. And hopefully that's helpful for the rest of you. First button is button one. That's right here. Number one, I have a set for custom white balance A. It goes between my Kelvin here and the custom white balance. So what I love about this is that Kelvin, I have programmed to one of the dials. And so I can just dial in my Kelvin if I'm trying to very quickly get it to, you know, switching from outdoor to indoor, etc. If I'm in a kind of fluorescence or overhead lighting scenario and I need it to be a bit more accurate for green or magenta tint, then custom my balance is going to get me much closer to where I need to be um, once I'm color correcting than I was if I just used Kelvin. Button two, no change. Third button, I have remapped that to false color. The false color feature is something that I didn't know about before the C70 or I hadn't really explored it that much. It is now the only way I expose. Sure, I use the spot meter at the bottom of the camera, but if you really wanna see if you've got your skin tones right, false color is amazing. Generally speaking, the pink value, which you can see on the, let's see, I'm using the SDI, which is coming through into this director's monitor. Let's see if I can find some good, okay, so great. This little mannequin here, uh, we've got pink and the skin. Um, so that would be an even exposure. Um, generally, if I'm trying to expose an interview and I have a pretty moody, um, a moody style lighting setup. The shadow side, I'll want to be green. And the key side, I'm going to want to be pink. Uh, red is clipping. Blue is underexposed. And those are the only colors I really think about. Number four, waveform. I've left it as a waveform. And the reason I don't really care about number four is because I have this little right angle adapter on my HDMI port and I have some electrical tape wrapped around there and I use this as sort of a poor man's HDMI port protector solution. I don't like the idea of a base plate or a cage that adds a weight and bulk to a camera um, but I also don't like the idea of a broken HDMI port. Um, this makes it pretty solid and kind of flush to the camera but it also blocks my, let's see, one and a half buttons. It blocks my waveform button and pretty much all of my zebra button, button six. Um, but yeah, waveform, I will use waveform when I'm exposing a green screen or any kind of colored background, like a, a paper backdrop. I love waveform for that, just to see if I'm evenly exposed across the, the whole backdrop. Number five, Display. I've left display alone. Uh, I toggle through the displays quite a bit. Number six, as I mentioned, I block with my HDMI cable. Um, it's kind of a casualty of war, unfortunately, but um, I've never been a zebra guy anyway. Going over to this side of the camera, number seven, I have that one programmed to magnify. I know that magnify is right next to it, but I find that my thumb just doesn't really enjoy going that extra quarter inch <laughs> over to magnify. Number eight, the one that says magnify, I have as frame rate. So I just to be clear how I did this. So you have to select this as like a user menu setting. So at the bottom of all the options, they say, um, I think it might just say menu. And I've selected frame rate from that, um, from that menu setting. So instead of it actually just changing your frame rate, it takes you directly to the frame rate change 
option in the menu. I have a few of those. Number nine, the function button. I have changed to base ISO toggle. So we got 3200, 12,800, back to 800. I find it interesting that there's sort of two switches you have to do between base ISO 800 and like, here, I'll show you. This is base ISO 800, but you press it again, it's still a base ISO 800. I think the idea is that it's crowding your screen when it shows it, but if you like it for peace of mind, you can leave it there. It works for me, it's just a little weird. The reason I like to have the base ISO mapped to a button instead of just automatically switching when I get to that ISO is that if you can see here, I have the ISO set to one stop below my base. So at 3200, I have it set to 1600. At 12,800, I have it set to 6400. And what that does is it gives me cleaner noise floor or a lower noise floor. It also reduces my dynamic range somewhat, but that's a very easy sacrifice for me to make because the situations where I'm shooting in like a low light scenario, like in a, you know, poorly lit room or evening or under street lights, I'm not looking to preserve a huge range of light to dark. I'm just trying to get a clean image and trying to expose the face properly. I'm also trying to keep things looking kind of dark usually, especially if it's a night scene. I don't want it to look like a bright <laughs> uh, daytime scene. It's not, it's nighttime. It should look like night. So having a, a pretty low noise floor in a dark moody shot is a plus for me. Dynamic range is one of my lowest priorities in that scenario as a, as a DP trying to expose my image and consider all the pros and cons. Number 10, this one, I, I still switch a lot. I'm always trying to find a good, good function for number 10. But right now, number 10, I have as on the C80, it's my sensor mode. Uh, unfortunately, Canon has not yet given us a sensor mode toggle. I'd love to just press this button and it would swap between Super 35 and full frame. But for now, I have to just send us to the menu. So it goes to the sensor mode and then you can change it to super 35 or back to full frame. Number 11 down here. This one I have set to digital IS. The digital IS I am trying out on the C80. I haven't done exhaustive tests with it yet. On the C70, I very quickly found situations where it caused image alterations, like kind of like a locked on look. And so I, I never use that again after seeing that once. The C80, I have not yet been able to reproduce that kind of locked on look because I think that the gyroscope that the C80 has helps to tell the digital IS not to lock on if there's no movement that it is, that is sensed. Number 12, this one here. This one I set pretty early on in the C70 and haven't changed it. This is toggling between the subject detect AF and face only AF. The nice thing about this toggle is that if you don't have a face in your frame and you want to use your lens as if it's in manual focus mode, this ultimately gives you that without having to switch a, like flip a switch on a lens. Number 13, audio status. I've changed that to, let's see what I actually called it, channel two input. The reason for that is Channel two input is what I have to change if I have a two interview, a, a two person interview setup. So I will have one shotgun mic into input one and a second shotgun mic into input two. And if I'm doing a one person interview setup, my channel two is kind of a lower safety track for channel one. But when I have a two person interview, I need both those tracks for recording. And I just realized my false color has been on this whole time. Sorry about that. Last things I want to talk about are the assignable dials and wheels. Now, unfortunately, the C70 has one more assignable wheel that the C80 does not yet have. I'm pretty confident this will come in a firmware update as it was the very last firmware update on the C70 that gave us this. And that is the set wheel assignability. 
I was asking for this from day one on the C70. It took four years for them to do it. Kind of wish it was faster than that, but I'm thankful for it to be here now. On the C80, it's not here yet. We don't yet have ability to map this to something. On the C70, I have this map to ISO change. On the C80, I have mapped my control wheel to the ISO. On my RF to EF adapter, um, I have this um, control wheel that is one of the options for adapters, and I have that as the ISO change. Iris wheel, or dial, I guess this is a dial. I've just left it at the iris dial. The rear dial, I have this set to change Kelvin. So um, this is great for switching between indoors and outdoors very quickly. Here's an overview of all the functions that I've mapped to custom buttons and dials. Feel free to take a screenshot, use it as a cheat sheet. Okay. Bye.